Hello and welcome to ADTV and today we're taking a closer look at the Chod Rig. Now a Chod Rig is a very short but stiff monofilament rig that runs freely up and down the line above your lead rather than a conventional lead clip setup where your rig would be below. Now for anyone who's unsure, Chod is a term given to leaf matter and debris on the bottom and it's especially important this time of year we're in autumn where all the leaves have fallen off the tree and twigs and that are all going to sink to the bottom and create chod and that's where the rig was given its name. So for those spots you were fishing perhaps in the summer that were dead clean and you could present on there nicely, perhaps not so much this time of year and this is where the chod rig really does come into its own. There's also a couple of ways to fish it, one which would be the standard sort of lead core setup and one would be the naked chod. So we'll have a look at them two separately, so we'll start with the standard one that most people would use. And that would be running the chod rig up and down a section of lead core in between two beads, which does present perfectly on what we were talking about, the chod bottom. So that would be all well and good if it wasn't very deep of weed or the silt wasn't really deep or the chod wasn't deep because you are limited to how far your rig can fly back due to the length of lead core. Now obviously you could get around this by splicing your own lead core and making it longer, but most people don't want to go through that so you'd fish it on a section of lead core, say perhaps a metre long. So anything where you weren't fishing in weed or something deeper than, say, a couple of foot, this would be perfect. Now if you find yourself in a situation where you're in an incredibly weedy lake or really silty lake and you wanted to fly that rig back, let's say three, four, five foot, that's where I would personally switch to a naked chod. So a naked chod is exactly the same, but it's just no lead core. So you run it up and down the line again in between two beads and you tend to just counterbalance it with a little bit of putty because you always fish it with a pop-up and you just have to make sure that that sinks nice and slow. So with that in mind let's have a look at the situations where you would or wouldn't use the chod rig. Now the situations where you would we've kind of touched on already so the weedy situations, the deep chod or the silt, all those situations where you're not quite sure what you're fishing over. If I had to pick a go anywhere rig and chuck it where you're not a million percent sure what you're fishing over, that would be the rig that I would use. But on the flip side of that, there's situations where I perhaps wouldn't use it, and that would be a real nice clean gravel spot for a couple of reasons. Now firstly, because I don't think it offers the hooking potential of perhaps, let's say, the lead clip rig would. With a standard lead clip setup, you've perhaps got eight or 10 inches of braid or mono before it hits the lead and sets that hook home. With the chod running up and down your line, it hasn't got that immediate impact of the hook setting in, so it perhaps is a rig that they could get away with a little bit more on real clean situations. If it was really clean, in my opinion, it's normally clean for a reason, so either the carp or other fish have been feeding heavily on that area, which means when they are feeding, they're probably feeding quite tight to the lake bed, so a bottom bait would be better in this situation, rather than the chod sitting, so let's say, an inch above that, right in their eye line, it's going to be quite alien on a real clean gravel spot. So if you feel like you want to get out there and give the chod rig a go, we'll have a look at a few important tips to hopefully get the most out of your fishing. Now firstly would be to get yourself a good quality pop-up, an extra buoyant one. Personally I like to use cork ball pop-ups because I know for the duration of my session that that pop-up is going to stay buoyant. The last thing you want to do is fish it all night reel in to find out that your pop-up's taken on water and actually sinks. It sounds funny that pop-ups would take on water but trust me some of them do. So if you've got a selection take a few out, pop them in a jar of water perhaps before you go to bed. If you wake up in the morning they're still buoyant they'd be perfect for the chod rig. And while we're on boilies it's worth mentioning colour. Colour for me is a big thing in fishing. It can be the difference between catching or blanking. So take yourself a good selection of colours. I first of all like to have a match the hatch colour, so I was fishing a few boilies, I'd get the same flavour and colour as that, and that would fish it if I was feeding. But if I was fishing it as a single, I'd take myself some bright, visual, strong smelling ones to keep a single. So some bright yellows, whites or pinks are perhaps my favourite colours, and it just gives us something to really home in on as it sits above the weed. So colour is very, very important as well. Moving on from that is you've got yourself a good buoyant pop-up. You need to counterbalance it to make sure it sinks slow. So you want your chod rig to sink incredibly slow until it touches the first bit of debris, it stops it 
and it fishes above that. The last thing you want it to do is to be overweighted and sink deep inside the weed. Now with that in mind, it kind of needs to be fished on a slack line. As you can imagine, you've spent all your time putting some putty around your swivel and, and getting it to sink really slow. To fish it on a bowstring tight line, that chod is going to be sitting somewhere randomly suspended against your tight line. So lay your line really slack across the contours of the bottom, let the counterbalance sink nice and slow and it will be presented perfectly in most fishing situations. And lastly, another tip would probably be to try and get the correct feeding situation for the chod rig. Now the last thing you want to do is the fish to be in a tight area, really grazing close to the ground. So the best analogy I can probably give you for this is if, I can imagine, if you can imagine a field of long grass, if I was to chuck a few handfuls of marbles in there and told someone to pick them up, it would take them an awful long time standing in one spot picking up little marbles in, in long grass and it would take them ages to do. If I was to change that with tennis balls and chuck in a few handfuls of tennis balls, you can imagine they'd quite quickly walk in, pick them up, move on to the next one, grab it, and they'd be moving around quick. So that's the fishing situation you want to try and create. You don't want them all in one area grazing on the bottom. You want them picking a the bait up almost on the move. So when they come to your chod rig, they're coming at it at pace, pick it up, and they're off. And that's how you perhaps get the most out of your chod rig fishing. So as we mentioned, now is the perfect time of year for the chod rig. So why not get out there and give it a go?